Welcome to the Australian Property Investment Podcast with your host, Aaron Christie David. Each episode, we ask an expert to share their key insights for aspiring investors to make confident property choices. G'day, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Christie David, founder of Atelier Wealth and mortgage broker. And, and, and with each of our episodes, we like, to call, we like to bring in what we call best in breed experts so we can answer your frequently asked questions. And today's guest, uh, when we talk about best in breed, it's someone that kind of sets a very, very high standard. And we're so lucky to be joined by Victoria Costa from Credit Fix Solutions. Welcome, Victoria. Thank you so much, Aaron. It's lovely to be here. Thank you for having me along. Not at all. The pleasure is ours because I can't tell you how many times I get asked questions about credit scores or credit inquiries. Yeah. What happens with uh, the mysterious credit file, for example? And I'm pumped. Uh, I'm pumped for us to have a chat and kind of debunk quite a few myths around credit scoring and what's in someone's credit file. Get to the source of truth on what actually goes on with all things credit. Uh, credit scoring and, and credit file related as well. Well, that's my area of expertise. It's been 10, right. 10 years and thousands of credit reports later, here we are. So, yeah. It's seen it all right. It's in the good, bad, the ugly. And that's what we want to kind of get inside, I guess, inside your brain and go, okay, what, what is actually good, what is bad and what is ugly and what is mm-hmm. great as well. But mm-hmm. kind of before we do kick off, um, just for the listeners, uh, just a bit of background on yourself, Victoria, because I know you've got a great, great uh, professional experience uh, which mm-hmm. has kind of culminated to you writing a book, which looks incredible. Oh, so uh, I know you're probably too modest to, to kind of touch on that, but let's go there. Um, so take us through a little bit of journey about yourself, Victoria, and, and how you got to this point. Yeah, well, thanks thanks for the mensch, as the young ones would say, I suppose, <laughs> the mensch. <laughs> yeah, look, I'm a very humble person. I get a bit shy. I don't like talking about myself. I'm very much a stay-at-home person. I, I started in the finance industry when I was 20 years old. I was actually working in pubs and I'd been working in a pub. uh, My parents brought us over from the UK back in 96. Um, So when I finished high school, I worked in a pub for a couple of years and I I loved it. You know, I I just loved chatting to people every day, the social interaction, the staff, we all became really good mates. But after about two years, my boss there, he, uh, he fired me and he fired me because he said I was way too smart to be a bar chick and I needed to go and get a proper job. So there I am, 2021. I reckon if ever you needed one. (laughs) Well, I was like, thanks, but no, no, I want to stay forever. Anyway, so I left, I left the pub um, sort of begrudgingly. And uh, I thought, I just sat there by the pool at my parents' house going, what am I going to do? And then I thought, well, what do people need? Where will I always have a job? And I thought, well, Everyone always needs money, right? You know, even if it's crypto these days, but everyone needs money. Okay, well, I'll get a job in finance. So off I went and applied for a couple of jobs and I ended up getting a job in mortgage processing. Yeah. Right. So I did about well, a few years in mortgage processing and then I tried my hands at being a finance broker. Um, and then I went through a pretty horrible divorce about 15 years ago, um, went through court for a few years. It was it fun? And I ended up being a, a single mum by myself in a housing commission unit in Western Sydney. Yeah. So there I was, and I was working. You know, I had a job, but I was only earning a few hundred bucks a week, and I mean that was that was okay. Um, you know, paid paid the bills, and it's only my son and I. You know, there's only so many burgers you can eat every day, so <laughs> it was okay. But I wasn't getting to see him. So, and I was working so many hours, as you know, we all do. Mm. Um, but, you know, my, my boss was reaping the benefits of all my hard work. I, I put in three years there. That was a, a credit repair business. But then I just quit. I think I was mainly just tired because yeah. I, was, I was doing a lot, yeah, in the, in the business. So I, um, I just quit one day and I just took some time out and just spent some time working on me and kind of thinking, oh, what do I want to do? You know, do I want to get back into music because I love playing instruments when I was younger? Do I want to get back into broking? Um, And I kind of accidentally just fell back into doing a little bit of credit repair um, in in Western Sydney. And that was back in 2013 now. So long, long time ago. Uh, And I had a a little computer from Centrelink. They were giving them out if you wanted to start a business because I had no money. And so I started my little, you know, credit repair business, which is now Credit Fix Solutions. I put myself through business courses, um, learned 
a lot of things the hard way by making mistakes, I think. There's no one there to teach best you. Les- the best lessons are those expensive ones. Yeah, perhaps. and and if you don't have the money, right, like how, how else are you supposed to learn other than giving it a go yourself? Well, um, but, yeah, now we've got Credit Fix Solutions, which is a national company. We have over 5,000 finance brokers referring to us. Excellent. I've got a great team. I've got BDMs and offices in, in all states. Uh, yeah. We've got Credit Fix Lawyers, a law firm. And so last year I decided I should put all my learnings into a book Excellent. and try and help other people because especially now with COVID and, you know, industries uh, collapsing and people yeah. losing jobs, you know, I, I kind of felt like I was obligated to pass that information across. So I wrote wrote a book which is a step-by-step guide to starting a business from home with no money, which is what... I did. Well, pretty much no money. You need about 20 bucks for a business card from Vistaprint, right? <laughs> That's not a plug for Vistaprint. Like you can get a card anywhere. I'm just saying like they're cheap. Um, but yeah, so I wrote that and it got published uh, late last year, late um, 2020. And uh, it's called From Zero to CEO. If anybody wants to look it up or they can get in touch with me, but I've already had some feedback from some people who have bought it um, and they are very, very grateful for the help. So it's a good thing to do. Wonderful. I guess yeah, well, you just touched on the, on the word there, which is help. And I guess that's the core of, I guess, you as a person and a core of your business as well, which is um, taking sometimes a, a, a not so pleasant situation around someone's credit file and fixing it, for example. Um, so when you talk about help, what is what is the business credit fix solutions? What does it really entail and who are you serving? Well, when I, when I started it, it was just a small business in, you know, Western Sydney and I had about 40 finance brokers, a yeah. um, little group uh, in, in Parramatta that got together once a month. And I just decided to go along and say, hey, I'm really good at fixing credit reports. I've been doing it for three years. Yeah. For another business, I'm now doing it myself. And the aim of the game has always been to provide a support service to finance professionals and to help consumers to remove unfair negative data. So I'm not saying you haven't paid your bills and I can magically wave a wand and get things removed, right? There has to be legal grounds to remove things. But to be able to remove unfair negative data so that the broker in turn can get that consumer and that family much, much better interest rates or into a home loan that at that present time, because of the state of their credit report, they just can't access. You know, there's just too much negative data on, mm-hmm. on the report. And I set up the business. Back back then, credit repair companies were all charging up front. Yeah. Um, and, and as much as I loved the work, I used to hate taking money off people when I knew it was never guaranteed. So mm-hmm. when I set up my own thing, I did it as a no result, no fee business. So I felt that that was very fair and coming from a, broker background as well as a broker you don't get paid until you get a deal across the line right so I was like well why should I get paid until I get it done so all these brokers are like what you're doing is so great and you're helping us and and I'm helping educate their clients so instead of them spending time an hour on a credit report with a client they could flick it to me I would be that specialist to have that conversation educate the client help them if I could flick it back to the broker and they can go and get you know finance approved so when someone's looking through their credit file, and there's often the credit score, people get really hung up on the credit score, for example. So can we just kind of touch on how is that credit score determined, for example, and the scale that, that is used as well? Well, let's just talk about Equifax, yep. which is the main yep, yep, credit reporting agency in Australia. There are three credit reporting agencies in Australia, but let's just talk about Equifax because it is the main one. It's the oldest credit reporting agency Um, basically your score is determined by the information that credit providers have recorded on your credit report. That then in turn gives you a score. So if you've got a heap of negative data on there, your score is going to be lower. But if you're really good and you pay everything on time and you haven't defaulted, then you're going to have a great score. And the score ranges from zero to 1,200. So zero is bad. 1,200 is amazing. We never see 1,200, by the way. So don't, don't, don't worry. Like the average the average score we see and, and, and from feedback we get from our brokers is as long as you're sitting at around 700, most lenders are accessible. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, and, and depending on your activity, look, you might be quite young and you've never had finance, you're probably not going to have a score. Yeah. So then you're going to have to trigger something that activates the score, like, for example, getting a phone plan. Yeah. Um, we always suggest that to the young ones who've just kind of started in the employment industry. 
And then, for example, uh, we've had property investors come to us going, why is my score so low? Because I'm doing well and I bought 10 properties. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, you know, you're doing well. So, you know, round of applause for that. But yeah, 10 inquiries in a short space of time for a few properties is also going to affect your score too. So it, it's it's always changing. The algorithms in the back are constantly checking our scores and we're being compared to each other as well. Uh, but 700 and up and, and you're fine. Don't Don't worry if it's, you know, not 1100 and not 1200. Correct. It's not, the, it's not the, you just don't want to be negative is kind of where we're going with this, right? You don't want yeah. to be at lower end yeah. of the spectrum. You mentioned there one, again, you brought up something there, which was a number of credit inquiries. And this comes up, especially when clients say going for pre-approval and they want to do multiple pre-approvals. And we're like, I don't think that's the wisest decision. You have one pre-approval, which equals one credit inquiry. Mm. And then it gives you your options later when you find a property down the track. So can you just kind of talk about what happens when you have really quick credit inquiries and what that potentially does to to your credit file or to your credit score as well? Yeah. So on average, the normal person has about 10 to 12 inquiries in a 12-month period. Um, So that's your normal amount. Um, A person in business, for example, who has multiple companies and might be doing multiple different loan facilities is going to be a lot more active. And every time an inquiry is made, so a pre-approval is submitted to the lender, yeah. um, a car loan is submitted to, you know, Macquarie Bank, whatever it might be, uh, an inquiry is made. And it depends on the type of inquiry um, and the frequency as to the effect on the score. So one home loan inquiry, for example, might drop your score 20 points, but it will recover the next month, you know, and as long as you make your payments on time, your score's your score is going to reflect that and probably, you know, go go up. Um, the problem is with three or four pre-approvals going in is all Equifax sees is, oh, that's four loan applications all in one go. Mm. So you could see a big chunk come off the score. So you might be sitting at 750. Four home loan inquiries, you could drop to maybe 650 or 600. Mm. But, again, it will improve over time as long as you then stop inquiring. Um, so you wouldn't want to keep doing that, which is why we always say, you know, please use a a finance broker because with brokers, you know, they've got ways around things as well, like maybe getting things looked at without doing a hard inquiry rather than doing that yourself. We see many people try and go and get a loan facility themselves and they try 10 times over a weekend and then they can't do anything for six months. Yeah. And that does almost what you're trying to do is almost set you back or then you're disserviced by having too many inquiries and or innocently just putting something through a, a website and it gets registered mm-hmm. as an inquiry. And it's like, well, you actually consented to going through the portal and that's what's now it's registered as an inquiry. So if I've read that, and we have this from time to time where people go, I don't actually recall making that uh, credit card. The, the, probably the most common one is I don't recall applying for that credit card. Mm-hmm. Is there a recourse over that or what happens in those situations, Victoria? From your yeah, look, I mean, any negative data can be investigated or queried with the credit provider who has listed it. Okay. And that's something that you can do yourself. So if you get a copy of your credit report and you see, like you said, a credit card inquiry on there and you go hang on a minute I never applied for that all you need to do is find you know the email address for their complaints team whoever it might be a bank or a you know might be latitude or whoever it is doesn't matter um, and email them attaching the credit report and saying hey I didn't make this inquiry I'd like it removed it's as easy as that Uh, we write about this we've got an ebook on credit reporting right so we we write that you know these are things that consumers can try and do themselves. Um, you don't need a credit repair specialist specialist for that um, when it just comes to something as basic as an inquiry removal. Yeah. Um, they do have 30 to 45 days to get back to you though. So don't don't expect a quick fix. And and nor can Equifax remove the inquiries. Like you have to go to the credit providers directly and ask them to remove it. They whoever's listed data on your report, they have to ask Equifax or they have to ask Elian to remove it off the report. Um, yeah, so that, that's inquiries. And same as repayment history information because we've now got the 24 months repayment history information for all of our mortgages and personal loans and credit cards going on our reports. If you feel that that's unfair, again, that's something that you can take up with your lender yourself. We yeah. do help people with it sometimes pretty much because they're just time poor. You know, if they're too too busy at work, they're like, oh, you do it, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Delegate to a professional or an expert, right? Is, is what it's yes. Like. It's what we're doing all day long. So <laughs> And so what you just mentioned there, so if anyone's unfamiliar with what uh, Victoria just mentioned there is 
comprehensive credit reporting will then capture you know, the last 24 months on, say, a credit card and making sure that you're, you're paid on time. Every time, if you haven't, if you look in the credit file, you'll see a red X next to that. And some banks were just purely are now using that as their data to see if you've got a really good track record. Instead of providing bank statements, they'll refer to what's in your credit file as well. And there's one red X, um, well, you mentioned Macquarie Bank before, they're very, very good at just relying purely on the comprehensive credit reporting instead mm-hmm. of using bank statements. So that's why we always talk about, you know, repayments being on time every time and making sure that you've cleared all your debts, say credit cards, so you just don't have an issue with going back for a loan in the future as well. And it's just it's very good financial practice, very good just life admin as well. But in the situations that something does pop up, uh, Victoria, where does you and your team come into, I guess, remediation or fixing or addressing some issues in someone's credit file as well? Yeah, well, we just, we, we listen to the person's story, right? Because we're all experiencing different lives and we've got different stories and different reasons for things happening. And in most cases where we take on a client, it's not that they're a bad payer or a bad person. They just, maybe you've just gone through a bad life event. Um, and this has caused something to, to reflect on their credit reports. So what, what we're doing is we're saying, look, we'll do the work for you. We'll, we'll act on your behalf with that lender. We'll look into all of the information pertaining to that data, whether it's a default or three missed months repayments on your credit card. We'll look at that. If we can remove it, then you pay us a fee. If we can't remove it, you don't pay us anything. So we're just, we're very careful with who we take on. Um, I mean, debt management firms now come under um, Australian credit licensing rules. Okay. So we do, yeah, we do have to, to be under, you know, an ACL. Um, and that means that we've got responsibilities to consumers, which is a great thing. I, I, I'm so happy that finally my industry is being regulated, you know, so make sure that you're dealing with a great, uh, you know, credit credit repair company who is under under that scheme. Yeah. Um, but uh, it just depends on what the information is. We're, we're very careful not to take on people, for example, who maybe are experiencing financial hardship at the moment. Um, so if they are a vulnerable customer, we will just say, look, you know, go to Money Smart get some finance tips from there, call the national helpline um, or, or go and speak to a finance broker and see if there's some someone they can help you with some financial advice um, about your current situation. But as long as they can afford our services and from having a conversation with them, which may take half an hour to an hour, it's all, it's all done over the phone. As long as we've got their credit report, there's four of us here uh, at the Sydney office home yeah. office at the moment, but Sydney office um, doing doing assessments. And, and that's completely free of charge. Um, there's no lock-in you have to sign on the dotted line. It's just, hey, this is what we can do. Yes, we think that we do have legal grounds to remove this data and therefore improve your credit score. Um, yeah. This is your quote. If you want to come on board, just come on board. Excellent. And I guess a lot of people, that maybe the connotation or the um, the connection to a credit fix was, oh, you're really bad. Like you must be down in the dumps or, um, you know, you miss payments and it's all in arrears. But that doesn't sound like that's the case at all. It could be something that, like you mentioned, yeah, maybe the the odd messy divorce, for example, or it's an innocent mispayment, for example, as well, which can happen to anyone based on a direct debit date and, and funds that are in there as well, well. All of us have been through, you know, hard times. I've been, you know, um, up, you know, creek something without a paddle, whatever the saying is. But <laughs> um, and 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 we're all trying to do the right thing. Uh, we have clients often, you know, maybe their partners got very sick, um, cancer, yeah. uh, domestic violence victims. They're all in a good position now, but yeah. defaults and you know these sorts of negative data they can be on our reports for five years. Mm. So you may have been through hell and back three years ago, but now you're back on track. You'd love you'd love to buy a home. You've been renting for 10, 15 years. But whatever's listed on your credit report is still stopping you. Yeah. So th- those are the people. And uh, some of the stories you hear, it just, you know, it makes you want to cry. But like I said, all of our clients are in a good financial position now. Yeah. Um, but you do hear some stories in my line of work. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. Uh, but that's why you exist, right? Mm-hmm. Someone Ultimately, if you can fix your credit file, get it back in order, get your life back in order, put you back with mainstream lenders. And I guess the other important part here is, there are a number of lenders that don't what they call credit score. So mm-hmm. irrespective of what your credit score is, they're not relying on that as the sole reason to make a decision to approve or not approve a loan. They will overlook that and look at the merits of your application and say, yep, 
we're not we're not going to solely use the credit score as the way to as the litmus test as for you as a borrower. And, and let's have a look at the whole application rather than one number in isolation as well. A hundred percent. And it's so fantastic that we've got such a great range of of lenders. Um, and that's why it's so important to use a finance broker as well, because if you've got a low credit score and it's something that can't be fixed, you still have options. You know, they might be a little bit more expensive, but you can still buy your dream home, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, you're, you're totally right. You can't always fix bad credit, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if someone's getting in touch with you, Victoria, what's the best way for, for someone to reach out to yourself and your team yeah, and common questions that you, you, guys, you, you guys will answer in an initial consultation? Yeah, I think just check out our website. You'll get some great information on there. If you fill in a contact form, um, thanks to automation and AI, you'll <laughs> automatically receive our ebook <laughs> on uh, comprehensive credit reporting. So you can go and get yourself more educated, go and order your reports, go and try and fix things yourself. But then if you need us, you can come back. Um, we won't you know, harass you with a million phone calls and emails. You'll just get your ebook and maybe a few follow up, you know, sort of top tips on credit reporting once a week for a few weeks. Um, and the website is creditfixsolutions.com.au. Beautiful. Hey, thanks. You just mentioned something else, which is uh, get your credit report. And I see a number of clients that go, hey, I want to get the free one or light version, for example. What's the difference between the paid credit report versus the free credit reports that you get online? It's a very good question. And I'm so glad you asked that, Aaron, because I get so irritated with these free credit scoring website ads. I get so annoyed. Nothing ever of quality is free either. So I'm like, oh, it's so free. annoying. Yeah. And so many people are just getting blindsided by it. I mean, that all these companies are doing are buying the data from Equifax and Illion and Experian. Those are your three credit reporting agencies. That is where banks and lenders are checking on you when you submit an application for finance. So it's those reports that you need to check. Um, these free credit score ads, they're just buying data. Um, it's not your proper credit score or cr- credit report. You can get free copies. The difference between, so I would suggest start with Equifax. You can go and get your Illion and Experian for free as well, but it's a bit overwhelming, right? You know, it's like, oh, all these things to do. Yeah. You can go to Equifax's website. It's mycreditfile.com.au. Grab your free report. The only difference is, is that you won't get your exact score. If you, if you pay for a report, you'll get your exact score but you'll get the same report and they they just they they categorize you into a grade if you get a free report so you're either average above average or below average but the most important thing is that you've got a copy of the report because it's what's in the report that's dictating your score anyway so that's the stuff when 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 you submit a loan application and it's you know, it's one of the big four, you want two and a half percent on a home loan. It's because maybe you've got a default on there that you're just going to get an auto decline. Not necessarily that your scores, because sometimes you can have a default and have a high credit score, but you'll still get an auto decline. So I think I, I just really, I get annoyed that we're being made to think about our credit score is so important right now. And it's not, you know, we even spoke about there's so many lenders who don't credit score, but it's about what's in your report. That That's the important thing. That's absolute gold there. Thank you very much, Victoria. It's, it's yeah. trying to drill that home to, to clients when we've had chats to them, for example, when new inquiries. And I think people are just conditioned, like you so many mortgage myths or money myths that hang around. One is I have to get a credit card to get a credit score. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's like, it's such a myth. I'm like, I'm not sure who came up with that. It's not that at all. I think you touched on it which, earlier with, before, which was get a, if you have a phone plan, you have a utility, you've already, you've already got a credit file already being built in the background. So, yeah. Yep. And try and stay away from a buy now, pay later well, loans as well. Great. <laughs> <laughs> They just they just hang around and they, they do nothing but either borrow drag down your borrowing capacity or negatively impact someone as opposed to yeah. And debt. I get why people do it because they think it's it's more like a lay by, you know. Because as Aussies we all think, oh, lay by. I'll go into a yeah. shop and they're offering me to pay it off over three months, but it's not. It's actually finance, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and if they put an inquiry on your report and then causes all sorts of headaches because it's on their statements. And then they have to give the statements and sometimes lenders will want them to close the account. So just if you don't need them and and some people think it's a good thing. So I have people call me and they say, well, I thought it was a good thing because 
I didn't want to get a credit card for $1,500, um, but I had to buy what I bought and I thought I was being smart by paying it off interest-free over three months. Yeah. But the reality is very different when it comes to the effect it has on your credit report and, like you said, servicing. So if you can, if you don't really need it, just save up and then go and buy the handbag. Like don't worry about the handbag. <laughs> We get on a different tangent, which is instant gratification versus delayed, but we'll kind of leave that there just to linger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people make their own decisions. And, and look, no, and I think no judgments is is where we go with it, right? Yeah. Like you and I, we see it. We see some people that are wonderful positions, people that are kind of getting out of bad situations as well. So there's certainly no judgments, but it's what you do with that information. So you can sit on it and you can choose not to fix your credit file or your credit score. We can be active about it and take some action and try and improve it and, and put yourself in the best financial position to be in the driving seat to then, yeah. I guess, dictate terms about which banks you can go to rather than being dictated terms about what to do as well. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you might just be getting ready to start saving a deposit. So you're listening to this. At least now you can proactively go and do a few things. You can go and get your report. You can make sure you can double check your direct debit, your payment date, sorry, for your credit cards, for example. Make sure you've got direct debit set up so that moving forward, when you are ready, when you have your deposit and they're ready to come back to you and get a loan done, guess what? They've got this beautiful credit mm-hmm. report in, in front of you. You can get them the best rates. <laughs> Well said. Uh, Victoria, I want to say thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your insights and your knowledge there as well. I'm I'm sure we're definitely going to get you back on for another future episode as well. I would love that. Thank you, Aaron. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you for having me. This is the first raft of questions, but as we get more feedback, I'm sure there'll be more questions to come up as well. So uh, if you found this episode helpful, love if you want to leave us a a comment or give us a a five-star rating if you found it helpful to you. We'll also put Victoria's details in the comments below so you can reach out to Victoria and her team at Credit Fix Solutions. But from myself and our listeners to you, Victoria, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for your expertise and look forward to chatting to you soon. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks very much. And we'll catch you on another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast shortly. Thanks. Thanks.